If a woman is concerned about a lost coin and she finds the coin, she would call her son, girl, don't you know, I found that coin. I found it, girl. And she would call her friends together and they would go out to Bob Evans or go out to country somewhere and have a big meal together and celebrate finding the coin. Rejoice together. Jesus said, I send unto you, there's joy in the presence of the angels. I mean, God is rejoicing over one sinner that repents. He is relentlessly showing to them that the God that you have in your mind is not the God of the Bible. And he's trying to get them to understand if they really had a knowledge of God, if their heart beat with the same rhythm and cadence that God's heart beat with, then they'll be concerned about the least, the last, the left out, and the left behind. Because God's power is demonstrated in, in its greatest potency in the darkest of places, in the most difficult situation. That's where God shows up in a big way. So we got the lost sheep. We got the lost coin. And then the third and the final parable, Jesus personalizes it. He said, there was a man. He had two sons. A shepherd had a hundred sheep. A woman had ten, two and ten coins. A man had, had two sons. And now he's bringing this thing down to force them to take a look at themselves and to reevaluate their religion and their relationship with God, their concept of God. The man had two sons. And then he says, here's what happened. And the younger son of them said to his father, Father, give me the portion of goods that falls to me. So he divided them his livelihood. And to stop right there, you've got to get this. This is a big point here. The first thing we see here is not the son, it's the loving father. First of all, he listens to the rascal. Here the boy had been pulling himself under the father's table, living in the father's house, benefiting from everything the father had, and he had to never say to the father, give me what's coming to me. It's the loving father. It's the gracious father. He listens to this nonsense. He listens to this ridiculous demand that he liquidate his assets and give it to this careless, irresponsible individual. He listens to him. Secondly, he's generous with his son. You got to understand ancient culture. In the ancient culture, there was this concept of honor and shame. And in the Jewish culture, if a son dishonored his father, that father could have him stoned at the gate at the end of the street. He could call the elders if a son cursed his father. He could be stoned right there on the spot. This young man has the audacity. He, in essence, is saying to his father, I wish you were dead. You normally don't get an inheritance if somebody dies. He demands his part of the inheritance while his father is still living. He, in essence, says, I wish you were dead. But his father is generous. He goes down to AIG before they steal all the money. <laughs> liquidate some of his assets, brings back bags of money, say, here, son, take it. But the third thing I see about the father, the father was firm. The father was firm. The father basically said what my mama used to say to me. Now, if you don't like the way I run this show here, then get to getting it. Get to getting it. She says, I will lend you a suitcase and I will give you everything I purchased for you and you can put it in the suitcase. You can just get on to getting it. The father loved his son. The father was generous toward his son. The father listened to his son. But the father said, this is a house where God reigns and rules. If you don't like it, you can move on. So the boy packs up his grip. He decides to hit the street. The term prodigal, the word prodigal is derived from a Greek word which means wasteful. He's wasteful. He's materialistic then. And that's the curse that we have placed on a lot of our children. We have taught them to love stuff and to love things so they know the price of everything but the value of nothing. They don't know the sacrifice that you've gone through to go out in the marketplace, put up with a bunch of nonsense from a bunch of crazy folk just so you could bring a few dollars home and then they will squander it like Grant went through Vicksburg and think nothing about it and then look at you and say, is that all? Make a preacher want to curse. <laughs> you see, greed 
and covetousness and materialism, it's an insatiable appetite, it's an insatiable desire you never can satisfy. My grandmama taught me a lesson I never will forget. She said, boy, you can have anything you want. Boy, you can have anything you want. And found out she told me about for about six months. I said, Grandma, what are you talking about? I can have anything I want. She said, you can have anything you want as long as you don't want much. Because <laughs> I ain't got much to give you. That's a lifelong lesson. If I learn to control my wants and my desires, I can have anything I want as long as I don't want much. I can have anything to eat I want as long as it's in the house. I can have any clothing I want as long as it's already in my closet. If I learn to want what I got, I can have anything I want. That will preach right there. <laughs> Dissatisfaction and a dissatisfied heart leads to a troubled life. A dissatisfied heart will always lead to a troubled life. You show me somebody that's always complaining can't find anything positive, can't find any good in their life, and they're breathing God's oxygen, exhaling God's carbon dioxide, eating up God's food, drinking up God's water, yet they can't find anything good about life. A dissatisfied life, a dissatisfied heart is a troubled heart. This boy was troubled because his heart wasn't right, and he couldn't see how good his daddy had been to him and his brother, so he got to leave home. We got to go to the far country. You know where the far country exists at? Right here. <laughs> the far country is right here and it's right here. The far country is everything that we imagine that if we had this, then I could be happy. Everything we contemplate that if I had this, then I could find peace. That's the beginning of the far country. So he had concluded until I leave here and go somewhere else where I can do what I want to do, when I want to do it, I can find peace, happiness, and contentment. So the far country started right here in his own wandering mind and his own rebellious heart. Well, y'all help me, I'll be through in 13 minutes. But y'all leave me out here on this lonely island by myself, I'm going to have to get my way back in. Well... He goes to the far country. And sin is so enticing, it's, it's so alluring, it's so deceptive, you see. That's what makes it sin. It promises us freedom, but it always results in slavery. Sin promises young people success and affluence and power and independence, but it always ends in failure. Sin promises us the wages of wealth and prosperity. We ain't got to work hard. We're going to go and sling or we're going to go and, and rob somebody. We're going to take somebody else's stuff in some kind of way we're going to get away with it. Sin always promises what he can deliver. Promises wages of wealth but brings brokenness and death. Promises enjoyment but it results in enslavement. Let me tell you something about sin. Sin will always take you farther than you want to go, keep you longer than you want to stay, and cost you more than you want to pay. It's going to take you farther than what you want to go. It's going to keep you longer than what you had intended on staying, and it's going to cost you more than what you wanted to pay. But this young man, he was still determined. He was going on to the far country. So he goes on to the far country, the Bible says. So now we got this prodigal. He's rebellious. He disrespected his father with such a request. Liquidate your asset and give me what I deserve. He has dishonored his father because this would have required a public announcement because property was held in public trust like our property is today. So any property transaction is open to the public. You go buy a piece of property, it's got to be filed at the Kenora County Courthouse. Anybody can go and see what you bought. And they, by law, they got to put it in the newspaper so people can see exactly what you paid for it. So I can go to there right now and find out you pay your taxes on your house or not. That's public information. So for him to liquidate his hard assets, it had to be publicly disclosed. And now he, the father, is disrespected and he is dishonored among all the elders in the city. Remember I told you that in the Jewish culture there's a concept that's called honor and shame. It still exists in the age and culture. 
If you talk to the Japanese people, you see they still have this tremendous kind